Okay. We're back. God willing, after a, a long hiatus, we're back for the, for the second week of Progressive Discussions. I'm your host. Well, I don't have to tell you who I am because you see the intro. But we're Progressive Discussions and uh, uh, we are on, um, of course, uh, YouTube, Google, and Twitter. Um, yeah, along with Trump. Yeah. I, uh, oh, yeah, great. Oh, you see all the, you see those demons smiling from ear to ear? Paul Ryan and and the evangelical nut uh, Mike Pence uh, with the with their uh, they they were so um, ecstatic about about uh, getting well voting about down the, Obamacare about for, the show they put on because that's all it was yeah a, a show oh he's a genius yeah Donald Trump oh where's Paul Ryan where is he oh what a genius man oh he's great man and of course Paul Ryan is like. Some, He's loving it, man. He's laughing and smiling. Oh, what he, what he did, what he did for me with the, the, the Affordable Care Act, and what, what, you know, he put together the, uh, such a beautiful, perfect uh, a health care plan for America, for America. Oh, what a genius that Paul Ryan is. Mm -hmm. Oh, what, oh, and then, oh, I didn't see Turtle Face, but Paul Ryan was there. That's oh. why. I, that's why it gave the six hundred billion dollar tax cuts to the rich. Oh. And knocked on, going to knock off 24 million people deserving of help. And, and, and the multi, multi billionaire Walton family is just one tiny example of the massive tax cuts or God knows how much money they get in corporate welfare. No, well, they're going to get that cut too. That, that, that's, just, that's just one example. The rich are going to get everything, including free welfare on the taxpayers dole yeah. meanwhile the poor will get next to nothing according right. to Congress now now mind you it has to go to the Senate now and you how many uh, uh, votes do you need to override a filibuster well you need 61 61 to override a filibuster well, let's yeah. see what happens but I know the Democrats are going to be livid and you're going to see a lot of videos of screaming Democrats, uh, 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 well, progressives also. And once they uh, expose exactly what it was, the a lot of Republicans are going to be out in 2018. Uh, yes. Uh, Bye. Our, our revolution has been uh, going uh, uh, live stream videos quite often. And uh, once in a while, Elizabeth Warren appears there with Bernie Sanders uh, mm -hmm. and so on. And, and, and you know what? I've learned one thing. There are more progressives throughout the United States, even in the so-called red states, than I thought, because they're showing up. There are many, you know, he might have gotten screwed over in the 2016 primaries, Bernie Sanders campaign, but, but he has sparked a revolution because all of these progressive candidates and politicians are coming out of the woodwork and and many of them young people well they're not geezers because the geezers are already corrupted they're already they've been on the take their whole life you know what I mean mm -hmm. the old farts like you know your Mitch McConnell so and so and then you got scumbags like Muppet face Paul Ryan I mean we're talking the establishment is already on the take I don't know if the DNC can be saved I don't know if they can if they will see the Holy Spirit ever maybe not but there is a revolution a grassroots revolution going on I watched I never saw it before I went to Aura TV and I watched the uh, the, the show when Jill Stein was on uh, Jesse Ventura's off the grid and the, the both of them <clears throat> couldn't be better that she Jill Stein really impressed me when she was on, because Jesse Ventura is a, is a great um, uh, interviewer, and 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 he is an independent progressive for the most part. He is, for the most part, great show. Oh, I forgot five lucky bells. I'm I'm sorry. Seven. And I'm not even drinking Yinling beer today. Yeah, there's no booze today. Seven lucky bells for this week's show. 
Seven. Okay, and everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch, soak in that conch energy. Um, King Neptune is on a, on a business uh, a business trip right now. He's on. Yeah, I, that's why he 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 didn't pick up the call. Anyway, uh, a gentleman by the name of David from Morris County, New Jersey, was telling me that uh, you know he finally uh, through blood, sweat, and tears he finally got his social security disability after uh, going through hell with New Jersey's welfare system health and human services whatever and the crumbs the few crumbs that they throw you mm -hmm. all these social service programs coming from the state um, they all suck they all they are equivalent to a few crumbs that's all they don't solve the problem they really don't it's like taking pharmaceutical drugs to mask the symptoms of a deep-rooted underlying disease mm -hmm. so David says to me all right I got Social Security disability and Medicare but because we live in a country right now where health care is a pay for out-of-pocket expense where you have to pay premiums and all that shit and co-payments and meet deductibles you know privatized he has they deduct premiums from his social security disability check just to have Medicare which only pays 80 percent now to a low-income person or a person living on a fixed income 20 percent of, of an a, 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 of a medical bill is a hell of a lot of money now it can be uh, so he applied for through the state of New Jersey uh, he, he, he did get approved thank God for PAAD and Lifeline, which pays for pharmaceuticals, PAAD. It's, it's for the aged, the disabled, and I think po folk, right? All right, so you got to prove for those two. But the other two, SL, uh, QMB and SLMB, SLMB yeah. which pays for your Part Medi B. Medicare, yeah. Part B. Part B? Well, Part B. Med your Med they said they, they'll pay for, if you're approved, they'll pay for Medicare premiums. Which comes no, no, about no. Part B only, which is like hundred and fourteen dollars a month. Okay, Part Something B. Like so that. it doesn't pay for all. Now, what the hell good is it? <laughs> you know what? State of New Jersey, uh, social services. You fucking suck. You are you are bona fide douchebags. I, I would say that there are probably states that offer less than New Jersey. If you go to red states down south, let's say if you go to North Carolina, uh, if you're poor, you, you you probably you know you have no there's no hope. If you if you sleep on a park bench, they arrest you for vagrants, and they put you in a privatized prison, and you work as sla for slave labor. Mm. So anyway, so David was turned down for the SLMB and the QMB because. He, he, his retroactive money from Social Security Disability, which he has in his checking account, is too high. Uh. The state wants you to have nothing, almost nothing in the bank. Well, they want you to have a, a, a chicken scratch. Same thing when you get on Medicaid. You gotta, you got you can't have shit. You gotta be in the gutter. You gotta pay down, baby. Reverend Dr. Bill, you have to be in the gutter in order to get that precious Medicaid that most doctors, probably all doctors in private practice, refuse to accept. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means you have to go to a lousy, stinking outpatient clinic at your local hospital and go on a waiting list and sit in the friggin' waiting room all afternoon to see, you might not even see a, a bona fide doctor. You'll see, quite often you'll see a nurse practitioner who can prescribe or an intern from mm, another country yeah. that barely speaks English yeah. this is what you this is what capitalism capitalism offers poor people low income and don't forget now the middle class is is gradually becoming part of the low income category because the middle class shrinks 
in a right-wing conservative controlled capitalist system okay now that's part one of my monologue so you know David has to somehow you wait around till you pay it down he's got to somehow he's got to get himself an HMO which is more privatization of health care HMO which means they got to deduct more money from his Social Security disability check <clears throat> and um, and in, a, in the richest country in the world the wealthiest country in the world mm -hmm. we should not have to pay out of pocket for health care mm -hmm. but if you're a rich son of a bitch who's uh, who's uh, got the finest like if you're a, a Republican politician who has the finest uh, health care money uh, that the taxpayers can buy Pay for. they're on the dole uh, you know what you don't want we the people to have uh, universal uh, single-payer health care you know what's a great idea you should pay out of pocket also for your health care uh, Congress uh, Republican Congress and, and the Senate you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander mm -hmm. Um, I'm riled up for another reason. Okay. I appealed what happened to me recently. Uh, what happened to me was my Facebook account was disabled. Ah. Because um, I posted that was given to me by a, an old friend who's a very popular professional wrestler. I was given a link to a uh, um, very extremely risque uh. photographs of uh, WWE superstar uh, Charlotte Flair, professional wrestler, the daughter of Nature Boy Ric Flair. And um, why on earth do these women, I don't want to call them ladies, why on earth do these women in the spotlight um, post uh, naked photos and photos of them in their underwear in a hotel bathroom selfies they call them you know mm -hmm. they, they take them with their smartphone why on earth do they post these or give these to someone who might be spiteful and post them on the internet don't they realize that if there's any chance of them getting on the internet that's it man once it's out there on the internet you're not taking it back okay mm -hmm. so they then they get angry and upset when it goes viral and everybody's looking at them uh -huh. like uh, uh, WWE um, wrestler Paige when she did the the amateur porn with uh, Xavier Woods and another pro wrestler her mother wants to sue everybody who is posting her, her daughter's uh, video now her daughter's video is on uh, I think Pornhub or some one of the porn sites. So now, like I said before, once it's out there, it is out there. So anyway, so this uh, no good son of a bitch, uh, uh, pandering, politically correct neoliberal Hil Hillary Clinton lover by the name of Tom Nolan. Tom, if you were in front of me, I would slowly asphyxiate you like an anaconda, and I can do it. Because he ratted me out, because he ratted me out to Facebook, my f all the, the uh, years, I guess, of hard work building my, my five uh, Facebook mm -hmm. groups and my two Facebook pages, including progressive discus discussions, Facebook page has all gone to waste because, because of censorship. Uh -huh. Because one of my five groups is called, well, one of my former five groups is called This Group is About Nothing. Yes, it was named after the Seinfeld episode about the show About Nothing. Mm -hmm. I did it as, as a goof, an experiment uh, based on rebellion of me being in other people's groups that were pretty much dictatorships, had strict rules, exercise censorship, and if you don't, if you don't uh, uh, march to their uh, uh, the beat of their drum, they threaten to get rid of you from their group. So based on rebellion and and based on an anti-censorship attitude, 
I created this group. Now, yes, I posted the link, but when I appealed Facebook, I says, you know, when you initially punished me by uh, blocking my activity for three days, mm. I just want you to know I could not remove that link of Charlotte Flair. I couldn't remove it because I was blocked from any posting of comments, uh, uploading of anything. So how can I possibly take it off the group? I would have happily take, took it off the group. So that was my appeal. Guess what? Because of Facebook office politics, they turned me down and said, "Yeah, oh, you're permanently your account is permanently disabled." Ooh. Now, I mentioned this on Twitter. What happened to me? And this is based on uh, the subject of censorship. Now, the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman knows that subject very well because Been that fighting it for moon moon that exp that inspired him to start his newsletter since 1977 called censored because he himself was a personally was a victim of censorship I mean and somebody on Twitter says oh you shouldn't post this this kind of information I says yeah but where does censorship end where does it end so since I'm permanently permanently um, gone from Facebook okay uh, I reply to Facebook corporate office and I says you know I'm gonna do a show and for for the longest time I will tell the truth about my experience on Facebook every day and night I was bombarded with scammers with fake American profiles that's right scammers from Ghana and mostly Nigeria <laughs> that use a uh, very uh, uh, attractive professional modeling type um, and and risque photos of, of Caucasian American women with fake profiles um, constantly bombarding me with instant messages and and uh, me and messages in my Facebook inbox to try to befriend me mm. and of course they eventually give you a hard luck story and then they hit you up for money mm -hmm. in that process their cell phone is always broken. They cannot video chat with you because I guess they don't have a webcam and their webcam is always broken. Then eventually they say, well, I'm not in the United States right now. I'm actually living in Nigeria. Now, why on earth would a Caucasian, a, a, a beautiful young female with modeling photos be living in a in a lesser than third in a worse than a third world country okay then they say they give the same hard luck story well my parents died in a car crash and I'm living in a hotel oh what hotel chains are in Ghana and Nigeria pray tell please tell me so anyway there's a, there are many red flags that pop up with a fake profile anyway Facebook allows them in legions, legions to come into Facebook, and this is not counting the constant barrage of spamming and, and advertisement and constantly being harassed by Facebook to spend three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars to supposedly boost every post you make on your Facebook page. They want you to pay for every single post. Mark Zuckerberg you're a blood-sucking parasite. Mm. That big Zionist nose of his, I'm telling you, what a beautiful fantasy that would be is to take a pair of vice grips and twist that big eagle beak right off his fucking face. Mm. How dare you permanently bar James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, you son of a bitch. But aside from him, yeah, the guy who wants to... Uh, kick all native Hawaiians off the island where him and his Asian wife own 700 acres. 700 acres is not enough for the very wealthy Mark Zuckerberg. No, he wants the whole island to himself. I read that article. Um, so anyway, censorship is a very serious subject. Where does it end? Where does it end? It starts with one thing and then it goes on and on. But Aside from that, 
I am very active right now on Twitter under Megalife21, James P. Madonna. Uh, look me up. Uh, I'm also, I have a uh, Google Communities page, uh, a Google profile. I am, all, I am on um, Google Hangouts under Progressive Discussions. And um, let's see, I'm on YouTube, of course, under uh, Megalife21. I was told Instagram is really kind of for kids. It's really not. It's more for pictures, I believe. Photo, photo gallery, photo stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know, all, you know the uh, all of the um, the women of of the world's oldest profession. You know, I heard that they use Tumblr. dot com because Tumblr, Tumblr which is kind of similar to uh, Instagram, allows very risque photographs. They don't get removed. So they're able to advertise their craft, so to speak. So anyway, that's that. Getting back to health care, I'm sure there must be some articles about the lovely Republicans and what they want to do to our health care system. And, and I don't know what genius Paul Ryan came up with, to be honest with you. I don't know what Donald Trump is talking about, but... Um, all it all it was was getting things together, amendments and etc., to be put in the bill that would bring everyone together. It was a show. It has nothing to do with producing a better system. Oh, like a photo opportunity. That, That's like what it that, like, like the photo ops that G.W. Bush used to, used to pull. That's what it turned out to be. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Because there is no improvements whatsoever. Well, they want to. They 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 have. They either want to or have eliminated the pre-existing uh, yes, rule. The, the companies can do that. Which means a lot of people might get turned down for for employment if they Somewhere have a. Somewhere around thirty-seven percent of people will not be able to get insurance. Thirty-seven percent of Americans will have not pre-existing conditions. Have pre-existing conditions will not be able to get insured. Think about that. No. You know what? So that uh, you know, it, it was a show. That's all it was—a show to get votes to get something passed. And you know what, Bernie Sanders—he has done nothing since he's been in there. Do you understand that? Play by except play it's golf. Over a hundred days. Except play golf. Whatever he did, but he accused nothing. Obama for taking vacations all the time. Nothing has been done. Everything he promised the point. during exactly. his 2016 campaign right. has never come to reality. Nothing, except nothing. him playing golf and 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 fraternizing with other rich I believe rich that people. I believe last night was the first time he's come back to New York since he became president. Really? Oh, his wife and his son was living in in, in Manhattan all this time, right? Or is his wife? Because I see his wife getting off the plane with him. But is uh, Ivanka and, and, and Usher, or whatever, and Kyle Kushner, they're at the White House. Kushner's at the White House? Yeah. The son-in-law? If you look out, every time he's got a photo op, they're sitting there. You know, talk about nepotism and cronyism. Boy, I tell you, under a right-wing capitalist system, there's three words that <laughs> stand out. Number one, hypocrisy, as in hypocrites. Number two, nepotism. And number three, cronyism. <laughs> crony, ca crony capitalism. Uh, ever since the Industrial Revolution, this is what we've had, a rigged system. And um, you know what? Bernie is smart for going on tour, uh, being interviewed, going on every show he can possibly go on because the revolution is growing and there are people in so-called red states that are getting very angry. They're, well, they're starting to catch on. They're starting to duh, finally catch on. Yeah. You know, like, uh, hey, wait a minute. I'm already, I'm already living in a shack. <laughs> and now, and now you want to take away what I what I was surviving on, and now I'm even worse off than being in a shack. 
It's like you want to take my electricity now. Now, now, if you're an intelligent progressive, uh -huh. which usually progressives are pretty smart people. Unfortunately, they they want to negotiate, and they want to they want peaceful protesting, and they want to sing kumbaya. But Inclusive. they're they're very very intelligent. They already know. They knew from years ago when the Republicans first took over. Um, who was president then? Was that Clinton when the Republicans took the House? Yeah. When they took the House and, and Rush Limbaugh was so ecstatic over that? Yeah. Yeah. A uh, contract with America. Yeah. Contract on America. On America. Yeah. Now, ever since then, progressives, they knew what was going on. Yeah. Then, eventually, the word conspiracy theory became popular. Mm -hmm. Jesse Ventura started that show on True TV. Absolutely. I mean, by the way, Jesse's show was taken off the air by yeah. True, True TV. You don't even see the reruns. Anyway, uh, then all of a sudden, conspiracy theories slowly, gradually started becoming reality. And then you had groups like Anonymous, WikiLeaks with Julian Assange, and of course the people that were being exposed want to throw people like Julian Assange and the, and the, the ones that run um, Anonymous in prison and they want to they want to call them traitors and this and that of course because it, it, look if you hit a raw nerve if you expose somebody who's guilty with facts you know what I mean they don't like that well then they call it fake news you mean you mean news that they don't like alternative alternative facts as Conway says Oh. Trump has alternative facts. The uh, Bergen County uh, native Conway, yes. Conway, yes. Yeah, not Conway Twitty. No. I like. I loved his music. Conway Twitty is dead. He's he's dead. He's dead. With that big Bush bu hair, bouffant yeah. uh, uh, um, Al Sharp. Um, no. Um, Al yeah, Trump. Al Sharpton, the white Al Sharpton hairstyle. He had that big. Comb, you know, 70s, in the 70s. Everybody had big hair. Well, the women had big hair in the 80s. But anyway, I digress. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings because I just, I'm sorry, but I just had to lower the boom with this uh, whopping monologue. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Now, my show... The show that I'm uh, that I'm going to do in the very near future with uh, the Renaissance man, the evangelist, can create. I will expose uh, relationship dating and relationships of today and online dating will be thoroughly exposed because honestly, it only works. Love only works if you are totally honest which includes your profile that you're posting online. You must be totally honest. And the other it, people, the men and women, both must be totally honest. Otherwise, you cannot achieve the success in finding that love connection. And I will go into details on that show. All right, go ahead. Uh, many measures... The job market is in its best shape since before the Great Recession. Excuse me? Oh, it is? <laughs> the unemployment rate now is just 4.4%. Wow, that's, that's... Its lowest level in a decade. Really? Where were all these jobs coming Employers from? have added a solid average of 186,000 jobs a month over the past year. Well... Uh, from what I seen, uh, employers uh, they don't want entry level anyone fresh out of school. They want experience, certification, a degree, and this and they want an awful lot to uh, uh, if you want a job in the United States. So I don't know where all these qualified people are getting work. It all reflects a remarkable recovery from the depths of the recession during which employers slashed 9 million jobs and unemployment hit 10 percent. The first time the rate had reached double digits in one quarter of a century. 
Hmm. Now, with the job market at or near full health, where is hiring particularly strongest? Yeah, hamburger so, flipping jobs? Below are the five industries with the fastest job growth over the past 12 months according to the Labor Department. Oh. Number one, software and information technology. Oh, when I graduated from uh, 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 Lincoln Tech Technical School as a um, um, certified, as an, a networking uh, computer technician, they told me that the government website was wrong. It is no longer in demand. IT has been outsourced. So now it's in demand? Oh, It's wow. up 4% or 79,300 jobs. Oh, really? As more business is conducted online, companies of all sizes and in practically every industry need website designers. Oh, that too? I was going to take that course and they told me it wasn't in demand. <laughs> App developers. This was a while ago. And data analysts. Website design? I didn't think companies were, had that in the budget. The rising demand for such workers has fueled an explosion in high paying software and IT jobs. But you don't need a degree from Stanford or MIT to be hired. Many companies are hiring graduates oh, really? of six-month coding boot camps. Yeah, what, what is that, like an internship where you work for free? No, when you go to school for like six months, three months, and learn oh, something. So, so what this article from the Department of Labor is saying is that uh, uh, American companies are, 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 you know, going easy on applicants now. Going easier on applicants. Number two. Number two. Temp jobs. Well, you can't really rely on it unless you, you got non-sub temp jobs, you know. Up 3.9% or 112,400 jobs. Good googledy good. This is good and bad. Sharp increases in temp hiring can signal that companies are enjoying more customer demand and need more labor. If rising demand endures, the thinking goes, companies will eventually hire many permanent workers. The bad news, though, is that regardless of their customer demand, companies are increasingly turning to often lower paid temps, contractors, and gig workers to keep their staffing levels flexible and control their labor costs. Well, I know in, in the entertainment industry, a gig is uh, usually consists of one day's work, like, like uh, doing an event, a uh, show. That could be it. The, the comedian or the musician or the singer is booked to do a gig. Do a gig and that's it. And that's it. Then you wait for your agent to tell you about the next gig. It's a temp job, but usually it pays a hell of a lot more than regular people. Number three. Office work. Construction. Well, uh, 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 well that pays a lot, but it could be dangerous. Up 2.6% or 173,000 jobs. Yeah. If we had the uh, America's infrastructure prioritized, that would equate to a hell of a lot more jobs than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and a lot of those jobs are union jobs, which I got to salute America's unions, excuse me. Because I was in the union and in the, in the butcher's union for 10 years when I worked, when I processed seafood. So I have to salute America's unions. It was part of the AFL-CIO, it was owned by them. Teamsters, the Butcher's Union, Meat Cutter's Union. 
with home building on the upswing and many Americans renovating their houses. Construction workers are in sharp demand. This group includes plumbers. Well, plumbers are always in, yeah. What a sticky job that is, but you get paid a lot. Electricians. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. And painters. Somebody's got to do that too. As well as people who pour concrete. Yep. And build wooden frames. That's true. And, and you know what? Even mason workers, there's, there's a demand for a good mason worker. Look, look at all those advertisements I see about uh, pavement, paving, you know, patios. Armor tech. Armor tech. That guy, hey, I'm, a, I'm 145 they, years old. The guy that talks like this, you're going to... You're gonna yeah, love yeah. the way you your your no. That's a he got. That's fired. the guy with the suit. Yeah, he got fired. Men's uh, uh, warehouse yeah, for men's, men, warehouse. Uh, men's warehouse. I miss that guy. You're gonna like the way you look. I guarantee it. Yeah. No, this is. Uh, he's got. A, he talks like this. Armitech. Armitech. I'm 140 years old. <laughs> Number four. Excuse me. The levity bells. Hold on. Number four. Number four. Health. Care. Uh, you know what? With with the toxins in 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 America's uh, food supply in supermarkets, and with the uh, with the uh, the chemtrails above, and all the pollutants around us, there is a never-ending flow of patients for uh, the American healthcare system racket. I'm sorry, the American healthcare racket. Up. 2.2% or 337,000 jobs. Yeah, that's probably being a conservative amount. That, 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 I mean, there, you know what the problem is? There's a, there are many, uh, I think, H-1B visa uh, people that are coming in because every time I ever went to a medical center, a clinic, or a hospital, I've seen nothing but uh, immigrant uh, workers, nurses, um, physicians, you know, the hospital I was going to for a, 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 a while had uh, uh, intern doctors from Pakistan. Yeah. When, I w when I used to go to Bergen Regional Medical Center yeah. in Paramus, New Jersey, they were all like interns from Pakistan. So I imagine they, they are H-1B visa physicians. This category has been among the most reliable sources of job growth since the recession ended in 2009. Many of the jobs in this industry, doctors and nurses and dentists, pay well. But not all do. One of the fastest areas of hiring has been for home health aides. Yeah, and guess what? Um, they don't show up. Uh, uh, many of them uh, don't even speak good English. Yeah. They don't. That's some good. of them don't speak any English at all. And um, and the ones that speak English have a heavy accent. Um, I know because uh, my mother, who's 85 years old, has uh, has had caregivers come to the house. And you have to really emphasize that the person speaks good English. Otherwise, send them to, like if they don't speak good English and they, and they, don't, and they speak predominantly Spanish, give them Spanish clients, Spanish-speaking uh, clients. That's all. One of the fastest areas of hiring has been home health aides who typically earn only eleven dollars an hour. What did I say? H-1B low salaried employees American greed in capitalism. Still. They, but they love that slave labor. If they can get you all in a privatized prison all the Republicans would love that. Some health care workers can earn solid pay. Solid pay? Without advanced degrees. X-ray technicians, for example, can make sixty thousand a year with a two-year degree. Oh, then my uh, the guy, the guys to work with, uh, 
Anthony Mezzacapo's uh, wife must be making a pretty good money. Because she, 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 I think, I believe she was a x-ray technician. Is one, is one. Education. Up to 0.2 percent or 76,900 jobs. Yeah, well, guess what? Less people are going to become teachers because Republicans don't want teachers to get a professional salary. That's for sure. They want non-union teachers to work cheap for a bunch of monsters that bring weapons into school. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Great career. They send you, uh, some of them are sent to bad neighborhoods to, to teach. Fuck that. Another reliable job creator, the education industry, includes everything... Chris Christie wanted to do that. ...from teachers, yeah. school administrators, principals to bus drivers, and cafeteria workers. Yeah, or well, well, chicken feed pay. It does not keep up with the cost of living. And it covers private schools and colleges as well as tutoring services. Hey, Bill Morrow says, uh, hey, if, uh, if you don't like working for less money and less benefits, then the company will just get rid of you. And, you know, he, like, he said it like it was, like he, he was happy about that. I he says, said it like it, it's supposed to be that way, that companies are supposed to be in charge of you. But he is retired and it is the and other way he, around. He is retired and living on a fixed income. So he is when he puts down progressive politicians of the past and puts down unions, he is putting down the everybody who gave him what he's got. Right. All all the benefits that people enjoy today. Yeah. With labor laws and everything, and and uh, 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 um, safety nets and social services and having having all the things that people that poor people and people living on fixed incomes enjoy today, this came from Thank you, unions. this came from progressive liberal politicians, mm -hmm. starting with I guess FDR. No, before that. Oh, there was somebody nice before FDR. There was a lot of people. They've been screaming and yelling about it since the, the, the Industrial Revolution. Oh, that's right. I saw a documentary. 1880s. I saw a documentary on the the Travel Channel, and they and they show they were they were progressive. Listen, every 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 uh, Republican scumbag since the uh, the beginning of the 20th century that won the election that was very suspicious in how they won it. Uh, 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 there was always they always ran up against a progressive Democrat who was truly progressive. They weren't blue dog moderates or anything like that, and uh, they won very uh, uh, suspiciously. And uh, I think it was wasn't it a Republican that was a uh, president during the Great Depression? Yeah, Hoover. Herbert Hoover is his name. And before him was uh, Coolidge. Coolidge. Yeah. The only, the only great Republican was uh, Teddy Roosevelt. He was a cool. He was a progressive. What Republican. about Abraham Lincoln? He was progressive also. That's when Republicans were Republicans. Oh. They are not anymore. Ever since the Civil War, well, that, yeah. they are Southerners. Well, let us, let us not forget another great Republican. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yeah, but who, he wasn't a Southerner. No, but he had he had a uh, a very fair like ninety percent uh, tax rate on the rich. And because the ri that's what it used to be. That's what it was. Taxes were for the rich. They are not for the poor. But these these average teabaggers that that live uh, month to month or week to week, they they say, oh, it's not. That doesn't sound very fair. Exactly. A, a ninety percent tax but rate on the rich. Who got them to say that? Probably Who brainwashed them over all the years so that they would say Probably that. Fox News. Oh, Fox News wasn't around at that. Oh, oh, um... The rich. Oh, probably... It's been a game they've been playing for over 120 years. You mean conservative propaganda? Exactly. 
to get them to agree with them. Brainwashed. They know they're outnumbered. Okay, the rich and big corporations are outnumbered by the poor and the middle class. And if the poor and the middle class ever got their acts together, there would be nothing. The asses of the masses That's with correct. torches and pitchforks. Hey, look! Look at uh, look at the way they block the poor, uh, the the uh, the uh, average Joe six pack from voting. You have the, the gerrymandering, That's why. and, and, and uh, you have uh, maybe the rigging of electronic voting booths. Uh, let's just, let's just stay with gerrymandering. That that's a yeah. that's a proven fact. Because they're outnumbered. If they ever yeah. you know if we ever got together and did our things correctly. They would have no uh, say in the government at, at all. Look at the people who got hoodwinked into voting for Donald Trump in 2016. There you go. Look at the people who... He drained the swamp. All he did was bring the swamp in the White House. Further. Well, when you drain the swamp, all. You, what you have on the bottom are bottom-feeding creatures. And that's exactly what he appointed in his cabinet. Uh, you discover them down there. They're, 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 they're no face. longer covered with, you know, this pond scum. Pond scum. This <laughs> pond scum, man. They're all their bottom feeders covered with pond scum. When you drain the swamp, all the muck that's left, yeah, you know, sure. uh, uh, you know, and then you got like the biggest mystery of all. When Bernie Sanders got screwed, you did not see angry protesting, but when Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton, you saw a lot of angry protesters. Mm -hmm. I could never be a shrink, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, because the very, the, the very illogic of human behavior would send my blood pressure through the roof. I, I, I just couldn't do it. Anyway. A brilliant blue color. Sometimes. Discovered accidentally by Oregon State University chemists will soon be the newest addition to the Crayola box. Are you serious? I am serious. We're talking the about crayon crayons? color. You're a funny guy. <laughs> inspired by the blue pigment known as Yinmin Blue. Oh, it's a Chinese blue. Yinmin? Yin Min Blue. Almost sounds like a like a Korean uh, politician. Is the replacement for the recently retired dandelion crayon. Why did they retire the? I thought the, I think the dandelion blossom is, is a very nice golden color. It's like a marigold, which is calendula actually. The vibrant blue was discovered by Oregon State University chemists who were heating up chemicals in hopes of finding new materials that could be used in electronics in what the university calls a serendipitous discovery. Serendipitous. Dipitous. One of the chemical mixes came out of the furnace a striking blue. The Yin Min moniker comes from the elements that comprise it. Trium indium, manganese, right. and oxygen. Well, some of those sound like trace minerals. With the discovery of Yin Min, brand new pigment, who other than Crayola would be best to bring it to life? The Crayon Company told fans in March that the new color would be in the blue family, but offered a few details. Vadkif, Mr. Vadkath, said Crayola chose a color in the blue family because previous consumer polling showed that the color blue, time and again, has been Americans' favorite. Well, there are many shades of blue. It, now, you know, then uh, um, I remember when cobalt blue became very popular. Before that, you had uh, midnight blue, navy blue, turquoise blue, uh, blue green, which is a lovely color, or ocean, ocean, what the hell do they call it? Ocean green. Mm -hmm. Ocean green is like a blue green. Or teal, they used to call it teal. I can't believe I'm talking about this. 
on progressive discussion. All right, go ahead, go ahead, continue. Moss Subramian, an Oregon State University chemist, okay. found the color with his then grad student. He said chemists in many ways have a lot in common with the children who soon will use the Yinmen blue color. I got news for you. It will be very young children because the kids are so advanced today. They're, they're, they're on their tablets. They're on their tablets and laptops and smartphones. They're not, they're not, they're not coloring any books. You're talking about like, like today, kindergarten kids. Today doctors are using coloring books for people with high blood pressure. They, they discovered that pets, it caused that cats and dogs and, and, and uh, 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 bonding with it with a pet is, <laughs> is very soothing to, the, to uh, sick people, you know, and the elderly and, and hypertensive people, you know. Curiosity starts at a young age. As chemists, we are curious, just like kids. I can understand the excitement of adding a new crayon color to the box, like adding a new element to the periodic table. Crayon fans will have the opportunity to name the new color by submitting suggestions through Crayola's website through June the 2nd. On July the 1st, Crayola will announce five of the top color names for the new blue and allow people to vote through August. The company will announce the fan selected color name winner and six grand prize winners in September. All right, uh, we got one more article before lunch. Well, and one more reading before lunch. And um, then when we come back, I wanna mention something that I learned by watching the Science Channel. Hey, hey. Something very uh, important <clears throat> for people that are paralyzed, disabled, <gasps> that has to do with stem cells. And, um, um, well, no, I might as well say it now. Stem cell, it's, I learned why the embryonic stem cell is the most important stem cell in stem cell research because the embryonic stem cell can become what, whatever stem cell is important to that area of the body, it can, um, it can convert. Undifferentiated. Right. Where, like in other words, if the person needs a stem cell uh, therapy in a certain part of the body, you have to use stem cells normally that are, that oh. are, oh, excuse me, that are of that part of the body. I'm not an expert in, in this subject, but like like um, a, a particular organ or nerve nerve cells uh, you have to use only those stem cells but with the embryonic stem cell right. it can adapt and 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 um, develop into that the very stem cell that that patient needs right and the only thing with the embryonic even though scientists kind of discovered a, a better way to acquire them is you have these uh, stupid fucking uh, it, 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 idiot evangelical right wing religious nuts, these zealots that uh, really don't want sick people. They don't really give a shit about poor no. or sick people, actually. Or babies once you're born. Exactly. If you're in a womb, they care about you a lot. Oh. When you're born, you're a moocher. Oh, yeah. To a right wing person. All right. One more. The founders understood the importance of free speech, a free press, and the right to practice any religion. And to keep religion separate from law. It was so important. It is listed first in the Bill of Rights. I know, you gave me a small uh, booklet on the Constitution. I, st I found that. I Nowhere. In those 45 words is anything about exempting churches or faith-based institutions from paying taxes 
or allowing those institutions to raise tax-free dollars to influence public elections. That's exa I had no idea what this reading was about, and I hit the nail on the head. These these mega churches and TV evangelists and uh, and uh, 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 right-wing pastors that want to stick their Pinocchio nose into American politics and get away scot-free. Uh, I, oh, incidentally, I never hear of right-wing pastors uh, uh, donating any money to to help the poor, <laughs> like people like Joel Olstein. You know, you, you I, I never hear of any of them uh, uh, directing money towards the poor, the homeless, starving children, and such. Okay. Yet that may now come to pass. Oh, really? On Thursday. Hmm. Interesting. Donald Trump marked the National Day of Prayer Oh, like he knows the Bible. by signing an executive order that muddies the water that should separate church from state. Muddies the water. The President had set his sights on the so-called Johnson Amendment. Okay named after then U.S. Senator Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Baines Johnson before he became the vice president to JFK. Okay. It bars tax-exempt religious organizations from endorsing candidates. It does not prevent them from speaking out on issues or legislation. They could speak out that you just cannot apply uh, uh, religious views to law. Just from endorsing candidates. To some religious conservatives, it is an anti-faith law. Well, they haven't be able, been able to prove their faith, so therefore it should never be part of any law. On Excuse a practical me. level, the Internal Revenue Service rarely enforced the law. And as part of the tax code, Trump cannot eliminate the law. It's amazing how they how seriously people take a a, a religion or, or or a cult so seriously that like like look at it like it's it's proven fact and and that it should influence law right i mean i mean it's it, it's not it makes no sense it's illogical only congress can do that but while the irs has not made this a priority in the past the president is opening the church door to a potential flood of campaign money all of it tax-free. Yeah. Individuals could donate to a church knowing it would go toward electing a particular candidate. Who is making those contributions will be shielded from the public eye. And houses of worship could become the new super PAC. This is exactly what the founders did not want. They're absolutely true. Religions influencing elections. Religion is based on faith, which is hope. It is not based on proven fact or science. It, it's like it's like a paranoid person, uh, a paranoid woman that perceives that that man is. Uh, looked at her because he is undressing her with his eyes. Yeah, he's a beast. What did they used to say in the old days? Masher, masher. She's perceiving this. It's her perception. It is not. <coughs> it is not fact. Yeah. And the same thing applies to everything in life. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Was it one Thessalonians? Five. Or five. One of those Thessalonians. Five twenty-one, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and and I posted that on on my Twitter page. It's on the newsletter. If the newsletter ever gets back into 
operation. I also posted to Timothy how people will become in the end times, which is uh, just about right today, Ac in accuracy, you know. Still, conservatives are not exactly cheering the executive order. Of course not. Most pastors are not interested in poli politicking from the pulpit. No. What religious conservatives wanted was something more draconian. Well, they want they want the world to be uh, thought of as flat again. They want to they, they want to do what the, the Catholic Church did during the Middle Ages: suppress science, suppress uh, anything that contradicts the powers that be. The president did not give private businesses carte blanche to deny services to same-sex couples using religion as justification for discrimination. And it is also unclear how far the Trump administration will go in allowing businesses with direct religious ties or private businesses that claim to be faith influenced in denying contraception coverage. Oh yeah, Republicans, they, they hate Planned Parenthood. Yeah. yeah, because because they care about the unborn, the unborn. But if you're born, they don't give a shit about you. Given the administration's support of the, the case of the Little Sisters of the Poor, which runs nursing homes and wanted a federal waiver from providing such coverage, it is possible some employees of religious affiliated hospitals and schools may find their health coverage limited. Speaking before signing the executive order at the White House, the President said, Faith is deeply embedded in the history of our country. Deeply embedded? If we're so deeply embedded, how come our founding fathers wanted to keep it separated? No American this should is, be yeah. forced to choose between the dictates of the American government and the tenets of their faith. You know, one of the Founding Fathers stated that this is not a Christian nation or a nation uh, uh, of any particular religion for that matter. It's in the treaty with Tripoli, the Muslims. A treaty that they had George Washington signed with Tripoli, the Tripoli pirates and etc. I didn't know this. Way back when. See, I'm learning, I'm learning something. Just like I learned about embryonic stem cells on the Science Channel. There are legitimate exemptions for worship, but there shouldn't be any for selling wedding cakes and floral arrangements. The United States is ruled by civil law, not religious tenets. Americans do not get to pick the choo and choose the laws they like. And the easier it becomes for religious organizations to use their tax-exempt status to raise money to elect candidates of their liking, the more likely America becomes less about religious freedom and more about religious homogeneity. Homogenous. Homogenous. Like conservatives... It should be pasteurized, in my opinion. It should boil down. <laughs> we see Trump's executive order as a first step, but it is not the step in the right direction. Outstanding reading before lunch. Uh, 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 by the way, are you are you okay uh, uh, with your supplement uh, taking? Are you are you continuing what you've been doing right along? No, I keep forgetting to take my vitamin E and A from Ooh. the fridge. Ooh, and your probiotic. Don't forget that. Well, that is uh, very hard to take because you must take it on an empty tum tum. You know, I lost. The only time I can take it is when I drink my tea. I lost my lar my largest Facebook group, over six thousand members. Yeah. Holistic Health Talk. Uh -huh. But 
the good thing is I have administrators on most of my groups that uh, hopefully will uh, carry the torch as I pass the torch uh, uh, not voluntarily but because I was screwed over because of censorship just like the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen was screwed over mm -hmm. way back in the day oh incidentally if you're wondering what the hell this is this is a lucky blackthorn uh -huh. shillelagh from Ireland blackthorn shillelagh it is not a mallet it is, it is not a gavel well it actually can be a gavel or a hammer uh, I was inspired to wave this around by uh, when Judge Judy uh, and uh, Ed Koch and all those people be took took over people's court ah. you know the gavel you know and you just, boom 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 that's right in America's court all right now plus it's gonna get pissed it helps you know pacify me as I wave it around okay now that's it we're gonna go to lunch we'll see you when we come back you'll be joined by how to defeat a conservative Bible verses followed by our promo Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com 
and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back from lunch. Hopefully, you'll learn something during promo with those very educational how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Ah. I'm, I'm bloated. We ate good. We both ate very good. Actually, I'm still eating. <laughs> I'm having a very tasty, healthy snack. Uh, you know, they call it string cheese, but it's, it's a mozzarella stick. Mm. I brought four of them today. Well, this is not my lunch, but it's my it's my uh, supplement to my lunch. Mm. You okay, Chief? Yeah. All right. Oh, you want to start? Well, I... You had to say start. Well, the, 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 uh, the show is being recorded now. Where? What do you, you think that sound was from our camera person? That little chime. That meant we're ready to go. Donald Trump To resume. Presidential transition team... Oh God, the challenged the veracity of U.S. intelligence assessments that Russia was trying to tip the November election to the Republican. A top Senate Democrat demanded a full congressional investigation. The CIA has now concluded with high confidence that Moscow was not only interfering with the election, but that its actions were intended to help Trump. Well, Vladimir Putin has business with, uh, you know, with... Uh, Trump and Trump uh, people. Yeah, and also... That he bring into and, his... And also big oil. Oh. American 
big oil. And guess who gets a piece of that? Uh, uh, Putin. Putin. So Putin is like more Putin or less... Putin had one guy, a big oil man, killed. You mean a, a Russian oil man? And took over his uh, place, let's say. As far as the oil, you know, the money coming in from the oil was concerned. Isn't that... Um, isn't, isn't that uh, common with uh, any opposition? Dictators, yes. Any opposition to Vladimir Putin? Yeah, exactly. So, so Vladimir Putin is is not a socialist, but he's a uh, a cap, very much a capitalist, and 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 a dictator. Did you ever hear when you saw the uh, the the Godfather? They were all sitting around the table, all the crooks, you know, the, the, and and. Uh, the one guy says, when they talked what they were talking about, and the one guy says, well, why do you think we all are communists? <laughs> Hell no, man. They're capitalists to the T. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, he, do, he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. The assessment is based in part on evidence that Russian actors had hacked Republicans as well as Democrats, but were only releasing information harmful to Hillary Clinton. Well, Vladimir Putin sure as hell didn't help Bernie Sanders. Ha uh ha. -huh. The official was not authorized to discuss the private intelligence assessment publicly and insisted on anonymity. Trump's public dismissal of the CIA assessment raises questions about how he will treat information from intelligence agencies as president. His view also puts Republicans in the uncomfortable position of choosing between the incoming president and intelligence communities. In a statement, Trump's transition team said the finger pointing at Russia was coming from the same people that said Saddam Hussein, Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, they never found it. Sean Spicer denied a New York Times report that Russia had broken into the Republican National Committee's computer networks. The U.S. official who disclosed the CIA assessment to the Associated Press said only that Republican entities had been targeted during the election. Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer mm -hmm. said he would press for a congressional investigation that any country could be meddling in our elections should shake both political parties to their core. Oh yeah, without a doubt. There should be no, well, there should be no internal meddling either. It should be a fair election. He said it's imperative that our intelligence communities turns over any relevant information so that the Congress can conduct a full investigation. Are they really going to conduct a full investigation? Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham also said they plan to pursue investigations into Russian election interference. Other Republicans have played down the reports. Texas Senator John Cornyn wrote on Twitter that Russian hacking had been going on for years. He said the matter was serious but hardly news. There was no immediate official response oh boy. from Moscow. Well, thanks to underhanded tactics and rigged elections, we still have to live in this pay out of pocket for everything capitalist system. But, 
Ole Morosov, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, in the upper house of the Russian parliament, dismissed the claim of Russian interference as silliness, silliness. and paranoia. Well, the people that were for those that got elected, like Donald Trump, will say that. Like the fake news accusers. Morozov described the allegations as an attempt to force the next administration to stick to Obama's anti-Russian courts. President Obama has ordered a full-scale review of campaign season cyber attacks to be completed before he leaves office in January. Well, it should be um, the election. Uh, campaigning and election system should uh, definitely needs re reforming. Definitely, just like everything else. The investigation ordered by Obama will be a deep dive into a possible pattern of increased malicious cyber activity time to the campaign season. Mm. White House spokesman Eric Schultz said, including the email hacks that rattled the presidential campaign. It will look at the tactics, targets, key actors, and U.S. government's response to the recent email hacks. The president ordered up the report earlier in the week, asked that it be completed before he leaves office next month. The president wanted this done under his watch because he takes it very seriously. Hmm. We are committed to ensuring the integrity of our elections. The Kremlin has rejected the hacking accusations. Of course. In the months leading up to the election, email accounts of Democratic Party officials and top Hillary Clinton campaign aide were breached. Emails were leaked and embarrassing and private emails posted online. Many Democrats believe the hackings benefited Trump's bid for the White House. Huh. Honk. Excuse me. Tis the season for pollen. Oh, excuse me, um, but um, a belated happy Cinco de Mayo to all Mexican people. Okay, okay. Was Cinco de Mayo was yesterday. Yeah. Okay. The greatest show on earth is getting its curtain call. That's what that was like old hat. Nobody really cared about the circus anymore. Feld, underta entertainment owner of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus said in a statement, the show will end its 146 year run oh. in May. So I was right. Yeah, nobody. The kid, kids are uh, kids are not are different. You know, uh, the uh, I guess the innocence they and, don't like clowns anymore. And naivety, naive, naivety, is that a word? Yeah. The innocence and naivety of, of today's modern children, it, it's just too oh, too corny or old-fashioned. I don't know, something about it. They Live entertainment, variety shows and all yeah. that are a thing of the past. Uh, clowns? Clowns, yes. Some people have a phobia to clowns. Nobody likes clowns anymore? Well, the guy, the, the, the guy who... Uh, um, who runs the um, the Travel Channel show uh, uh, Ghost Adventures? Zach Bagans, he has a a phobia of clowns and dolls. Ooh. You know, like 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 ventriloquist dummies and well, any dolls. You know, uh, which is um, 
I don't know if there's a similarity between the fear of clowns and the fear of dolls, but they can be spooky. You know? The iconic circus declined in recent years and the high operating costs mm -hmm. and long costly legal battles with animal rights groups yeah. such as the one to eliminate elephant acts. Oh, they, they, they abuse those poor elephants. They, they chain their ankles and they, they hit them. Huh? And, um, well, the big cats really, who are, which are endangered anyway, they really, animals should not be subject and forced to entertain humans for the meager food that they receive and 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 the greed of the of the humans that uh that own them just like with orcas and dolphins you know that perform at sea world and you know and live in these man-made saltwater uh pools it's it's cruel it's cruel they're wild animals tickets sales had already fallen but they dropped more significantly than anticipated after the elephants were retired last May. The company's two circus shows, Out of This World and Circus Extreme, have 30 shows left, including appearances in Atlanta, Brooklyn, and Boston. The final shows are May 7 at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, and May 21 at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale in New York. This will be a difficult business decision to make. But by ending the circus tours, we will be able to concentrate on the other lines of business within the Feld Entertainment Portfolio, said Juliet Feld, Chief Operating Officer. Now that we have made this decision, as a company and as a family, we will strive to support our circus performers and crew in making the transition to new opportunities. The announcement means most of the show's 500 or so employees will be left without work. Hey! wonder if uh, Trump could save those jobs. Circus performers? Circus act? Well, they'll probably say go apply at McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King. What are they going to do? I don't know. What are they going to do? Feld said some will be transferred to some of the company's more profitable shows. Monster Jam, Disney on Ice, and Marvel Live. And it will help with some job replacement, resumes, housing relocation. At its prime, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus was considered oh. a family-friendly outing. Well, yes, that's true. That's why it's been around for so long. But then the truth came, you know, with the. Uh, with, with the mistreatment of, of these wild animals and, and domesticated animals that perform. But the shows lost their appeal toward the end of the 20th century. CEO Kenneth Feld told the AP he believes it grew outdated and difficult for audiences with shorter attention spans. That is also true. Uh, unfortunately, uh, humans have very short attention spans, and modern humans have even shorter attention spans. It's like a child, man. A lot of adults have the attention span of a child. You know, unless it's something important to them, then you have to really focus and concentrate on what they're saying. 
the competitor in many ways is time. It's a different model that we can't see how it works in today's world to justify and maintain an affordable ticket price. So, you've got all these things working against you. When the Feld family first acquired the circus, the show was just under three hours long. Today the show is two hours and seven minutes. The longest segment is a tiger act. Twelve minutes. Siegfried and... No, that's Vegas. Siegfried and Roy, that's a Vegas act. I don't even know if they... I think they retired, didn't they? I don't know. Not sure. A battle over elephant acts, a staple of the show since Barnum brought an Asian elephant named Jumbo to America in 1882, ensued between Feld Entertainment and animal rights activists in court and went on for 15, 14 years. But in 2014, Feld Entertainment won $25.2 million in settlements. By that point, though, cities such as Los Angeles, Oakland, California, and Asheville, North Carolina, mm. had restrictions on animal acts. Next year, the company announced the circus would retire its elephants. You yeah, the poor things, man. I feel bad for them. I really do. This is the most significant change we have made since we founded the Ringling Brothers Center for Elephant Conservation in 1995. Kenneth Feld said in a statement in 2015, this decision was not easy, but it is in the best interest of our company, our elephants, our customers. Well, the abuse of animals, whether it be for profit or, or not, is sadly, tragically, a reality today. Uh, very, um, I guess it's more out in the open. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's yeah. on the increase. I'm not sure if it's always been around, but Somebody has to defend the rights of these poor uh, victims, these animals, and, uh, um, you know, forcing them, forcing them to perform day in and day out is, is cruelty, as far as I'm concerned. You're exploiting them. Like, you know, you know, you know what they were getting? I mean, this was several years ago. I was in, in the Florida Keys. They were getting a hundred or hundred fifty dollars a pop to, to to get in the water with a dolphin and pet it, cool, and and play with it. And and I and I and I was I was bitching when I was in Cancun, Mexico. Uh, I mean, um, Cozumel, that the Mexican the kid where wanted pesos to to pet the the nurse shark. You know, there's a gentle, there's a shark, unless you put your hands in its mouth, called the nurse shark. They're, they're really not offensive. But just to pet it, he wanted to get paid. But, you know, but that's different. He's a poor kid living in Mexico. But in this case, $100, $150 a pop to pet the dolphin, and the dolphin is, is held captive, that's exploitation, man. That's like, that's like people in Bangladesh and and China getting getting uh, next to nothing to work or, or uh, office workers in the Philippines getting 50 cents an hour you know you know what my mother's uh, former uh, well care insurance representative said he's a Philippine man from the Philippines he says well that's a lot more than they're used to getting 
Oh, what an excuse for exploiting employees and giving them bottom of the barrel wages. What an excuse. Well, that's more than what they had. Right. He, he sounded like a Philippine Barbara Bush. Exactly. But, you know, they should be it's thankful. Step up for those people. It's a step up for them sleeping on the ground in the New Orleans Superdome yeah. after Hurricane Katrina. It's a step up for them. Mm -hmm. What excuses? Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadagno. What the heck? in New Jersey right. has formally launched her campaign for governor. You know, try to get people to remember or pronounce her name. She better use a stage name. Guadagno. Call her call name. Change your name to uh, to to Connie Lingus. <laughs> filed the paperwork her to run for governor last week. I'm a fun guy. I love mushrooms. I'm a fun guy. And she will declare her candidacy, Connie Lingus, for the Republican Party nomination in the Mexican restaurant in Kingsburg. Let me ask you a question: What political party uh, is she representing? I just said it: the Republican Party. Oh, that she sucks. That she's another Christy, Christine Todd Whitman. Yeah, witless. Guadagno. Wait a minute, Guadragno, that sounds very ethnic. Isn't she selling out her people by uh, running as a Republican? Well, doesn't that, isn't that Italian? What? Is she? I don't know, I don't know. G-U-A-D-A-G-N-O. -no. Oh, she might be Italian then. Yeah. And she might be Caucasian. She lives in Monmouth Beach. Monmouth Beach, which is near like Belmar and Seagird and uh, 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 Spring, um, what the hell is that? Yeah, Belmar, that area, right? Uh, uh, Neptune, Monmouth, Monmouth County. And she has spent the last seven years working mostly in the shadow of Governor Christie. Oh, well, that's some shadow <laughs> cast by. It's a wonder she never had any sunshine. You know, you, you uh, this is not planned. This show is 100% yeah, ad-libbed. Yeah. Unscripted, unplanned. Now, I had no idea he was going to line me up with that joke. That's quite a shadow. Oh, God. As the state's first lieutenant governor, <laughs> she was charged with cutting red tape and economic growth. She also serves as Secretary of State. Much of God Daigo's uh, tenure has been spent traveling the state to welcome new business or meeting with companies to bring them to New Jersey. Isn't Mr. Murphy running as a Democrat? Phil Murphy. Phil Murphy. He's a Democrat. Is he running? Yeah, no, I, 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 I there's one, one thing's for sure, I am not voting for a Republican ever, ever, never, in any way, shape, or form. She is known for her personal touch with business leaders. Of course, business leaders. Business, business. Trickle, trickle, dickle down. That's a big lie anyway. Often giving out her cell phone number. To who? And giving them a direct line to the state house. You mean like like CEOs maybe? Hey, here's my hey, here's my card. Hey, hey. What? what? Here's Call my me. card. He, she's schmoozing, right? She's she's schmoozing with the CEOs, with the muckety mucks. Well, if you look at her, she's a very attractive woman. Oh, like the Fox News conservatives, like yeah. the like the, uh, the 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 bombshells, the the buxomy bombshells of Fox News. Hey, what is it about? What is it about the right wing that all of a sudden they're getting all these uh, hot-looking chicks and and all the uh, all the ugly uh, um, feminists are attracted to the uh, the liberal side? All of the uh, you know, what was that a hideous woman, Betty Friedan? 
Frida and the other one, Bella Bella, Bella Abzug. Abzug. <laughs> the big hat like Truman Capote. And then, of course, Gloria Steinem. And yeah, all these uh, bulldog chicks. You know, it's like, and all of a sudden, the conservatives are attracting, I mean, they're selfish, miserable, cold-hearted women, but they're very attractive and big-breasted. Although she has low name recognition with most voters, she is among the most recognized in the field of candidates in both parties. Does she tell the CEO, is that a banana in your pocket or, or are you happy to see me, big boy? Or is that a pad so I can write down my phone number? <laughs> Here, take my number. Don't forget it now. Don't lose my card. <laughs> Guadagno will Guadagno. enter the race <laughs> with significant support from about three dozen lawmakers and party leaders and has the advantage of having served as one of the top elected officials in the state. Oh gosh. In the party primary, Guadagno will compete for the nomination with Assemblyman Jack Chiaccarelli. Jack Spratt. Of Somerset County. And Nutley Commissioner Steve Rogers. And let me guess. Chris Christie might, will probably campaign for her. Oh, of course. And, and, and as long as he doesn't cast a shadow, as long as she doesn't stand behind him, she will be recognized. Yeah. Celebrity bills. Okay, what do you want to uh, want to do? Oh, that's right. We got one more for the road. One more for the road. One more for the road. Please don't pick anything about crayons. Crayons are gone for the day. All right, all right. Pick a pick an interesting one. This is Comey. That's good. You can debate whether FDI Director James Comey late October announcement that potentially relevant information had been uncovered regarding Hillary Clinton's private email server cost her the presidential election. But, with the wisdom of hindsight, it's virtually impossible to defend his decision to make such a show of a discovery that ultimately amounted to nothing. It all amounted to nothing, and all the um, the online uh, articles from Anonymous and WikiLeaks amounted to nothing because they they helped the wrong person get elected, and uh, the um, Comey and um, Loretta Lynch. It all amounted to nothing. Comey's actions in the late stages of the 2016 presidential campaign seem likely to be the focus of a recently announced Inspector General's investigation of the conduct of the FBI in the run-up to the November election. The probe will be wide-ranging, encompassing the FBI's various public statements on the matter, <coughs> excuse me, whether its deputy director should have been recused and whether Department of Justice or FBI employees leaked non-public information. Any objective analysis of the 2016 election quickly makes clear that Comey, someone most Americans had never even heard of before last year, That's true. was the third central actor in the election drama alongside Clinton and Donald Trump. In early July, Comey played the villain in the eyes of Republicans by detailing a string of questionable conduct related to Clinton's use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State before concluding that there are no charges to be brought. Democrats largely touted Comey's decision, citing it as evidence that the focus on Clinton's emails was much ado about nothing. 
and that the issue was settled. Still, Comey's condemnation of Clinton's email practices, although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or our, her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information, there is no evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information, he said. Trump's campaign used the extremely careless language in ads, and Democrats grumbled that Comey had overstepped the bounds of his office. Well, if you do doing your job. You're not overstepping any bounds. Yeah, but he didn't do his job. That's the problem. Yeah. Understepped his bounds. Right. Understep. He tried to s say that there was more going on than was. That's what came out. Well, I, I, ten wasn't true. I tend to believe it, the truth lies somewhere in the middle between the conspiracy theory uh, organizations and uh, and the mainstream media. I, I think there's definitely more to our well, if he uh, would have found two party system than meets the eye. If he would have found classified emails, obviously he would have said something. Because he, he didn't find because it. he's a uh, he himself is a Republican, right? Right. James Comey? His first name? Comey. He, he, he's a Republican, so of course he's going to have emu He's going to jump on Hillary Clinton's like a, like a duck on a June bug, like uh -huh. the, like the, uh, the the Southern people say. In it, Comey said that a computer owned by former Congressman Anthony Weiner. Oh uh, yes. And his wife, Huma Abedin, yeah. had been discovered to have 650,000 emails on Wow! It. And you know the infamous Anthony Weiner, the guy that looks like a dock shound. Yeah, you know what he was doing with the sexting and the photos. Some of which were considered potentially relevant to the Clinton case. The computer was discovered as part of a separate investigation of Wiener allegedly exchanging sexually oriented text messages with 15 year old Chickarini. 15 year old? That makes it worse. He's, he's, uh, he's a married man and she's a minor. Yeah, but it had nothing to do with Clinton. No. No, it just had to do with, with him personally That's right. and his political c career going uh, down the drain. The assumption at the time was that given the proximity of the election, less than two weeks away, Comey must have seen or been briefed on emails on that Wiener Abedin computer that were troubling. and. Uh, might lead to a decision to reverse the July judgment not to be having Clinton indicted. Turns out that assumption was wrong, dead wrong. There really wasn't anything new on the computer. But by the time that became clear, Clinton had been sidetracked, for the final days of the campaign. So why did Comey do what he did? My working assumption is that he was deeply cowed by Republican threats about transparency when it came to the FBI investigation of the Clinton server. It was, after all, a unique and politically fraught situation. The front runner to be the next president of the United States was 
part of an investigation by the current President's Justice Department in the heat of a campaign. The heat of the night. Comey cited those odd circumstances in July. This will be an unusual statement in a couple of ways, he said. First, I am going to include more detail about our process than I normally do because I think the American people deserve those details in a case of intense public interest. The only logic that then explains Comey's decision to wade into the final days of the presidential race is out of a sort of abundance of caution that he didn't really know what was on the Wiener Abaddon computer. The Wiener Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> Which I get, sort of, but given the stakes, it seems as though Comey would have been far better off waiting until the bulk of the emails had been checked against what the FBI examined so that he could know whether something new might be in them. I'm fascinated to see what the IG report finds, but I am hard pressed to understand why Comey did what he did in the dying days of the campaign. Yeah, well, oh boy, oh boy. When does it end? When does it, when does, when the, when does all the uh, negativity end and happiness begin? Uh -huh. Maybe after the worms get uh, get our our carcasses and we move on, hopefully to a better light life in a, in a parallel universe uh, oh uh, or gosh. another dimension. Uh, I've, I've, I've been watching a lot of Science Channel documentaries and other documentaries that are near the Science Channel. I have Verizon FiO, so I have these. Uh, these other channels that have interesting info. One, one of them all week was uh, a, uh, a Nazi Germany uh, documentaries, one after the other. Like, uh, like uh, there was one, one of the episodes was on Adolf Hitler's doctor, who had him so drugged up with bar barbiturates and and uh, 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 very harsh drugs with very negative side effects. And the man, he had the man totally drugged up. And then, and then, what happened was when Adolf Hitler first, um, <clears throat> after he um, joined the Nazi Party uh, with uh, Hess, I think Hess was like his right hand man at one time. When he became Chancellor, I think in 1933, I think it was, um, uh, there was a, a psychiatrist that had. Uh, past psychiatric medical records on Adolf Hitler that was mysteriously that mysteriously died of, of suicide and, and it was made to appear uh, to be uh, suicide you know how they tend to do that even today make it appear to be suicide but anyway he was going to come out with uh, hmm. medical records psychiatric records on Adolf Hitler. But anyway, his doctor had him super drugged up. I mean, heavy duty. Um, um, and for virility, he gave him, he injected bull semen into him. Ah. Yeah. The hell is that? Well, I know, I know Orchic, which is a, a bull, a bovine testicular uh, a glandular extract, does work with testosterone with a man's hormonal uh, uh, shortcomings it does work. I don't know how it works it doesn't seem logical that it would work but it works you know uh, isn't there something in, in natural medicine that set, refers to like helps like like if something uh, I know homeopathy it mimics the symptoms of the disease and your body reacts to it. Yeah, well, I mean, but a glandular in homeopathy, you 
you uh, you get sometimes the opposite of what you would think you need. Yeah, like let, that works. Like let's take apis, which is bee venom. There's something about apis that helps arthritis, right? So oh, because apis, when you get bit by the bee, you inflame, you blow up. A histamine reaction and inflame. And to cure that reaction, you take the apis, which gives you the same reaction. So it's like mimicking the symptoms. Like versus like. Like versus like. Yeah. Which is probably the science behind glandular extracts. Like raw thymus for the immune system. Well, you got to be very careful when you say things like that because when you are dealing with homeopathy, you are dealing with energetic medicine, and in fact, there is nothing, nothing of the original product in the it's so it's di it, it's so things. There's nothing in there. It's so diluted. So diluted. Like, like only the energy like, signature. Like like Arnica Montana, which is very popular, is is created from the mountain daisy yeah. the flower called the mountain daisy but when you're dealing with a 30x arnica montana you're dealing with a a super diluted extract There's no elements in there per se right it's just energy energy you'll see star trek when star trek is on they'll say did you read that energy signature of the other uh, ship yes so they know, they can tell the energy signatures of things, and that's what you're dealing hey, with with homeopathy. Anything law, living or not the element. Anything itself. living or that or that anything that used to be living has energy. Even this shillelagh right. wood. Right. It, this is from a living tree called blackthorn. Okay. It has energy. When you when you feel it, there's nothing like the grip of a wooden handle compared to any, like a steel. Like you can feel there's something about it. It gives off an energy. It maybe even has a certain aura if you have the right uh, equipment. You know, it, it gives off an, Yeah, it gives off energy. Yeah. It's, it's a living thing. All right, because listen, that, people. Because at the basic, we yeah. are all just light. We are all just energy. Well, the basic energy of the universe is what electromagnetic, or is organ that the energy? Organ. Well, that's organ and chi. Organ can become many forms of energy. Oh, okay. But it is one of the basic primordial. In other words, it is a primordial. In other words, the is organ energy like chi energy that flows through the body. That's Electro what uh, It has many names. Meridians. Alien vital. Chi. Uh, something uh, vital something. Has many names. Yeah, like acu many acupuncture, acupressure uh, you know? deals with chi yeah. energy. Uh, a blockage, the blockage of chi energy uh, contributes to uh, illness. Uh, 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 well, wouldn't it be fascinating if somebody with, with a lot of money who wasn't a greedy bastard was a decided to sponsor both uh, Nikola Tesla and 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 Wilhelm Reich to to be in the same laboratory yeah but that does not happen you in a capitalistic society no. no hey by the way when uh, JP okay. Morgan found out what Nikola Tesla wanted uh, the purpose of building that tower for a, a Free hundred, energy? hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever uh -huh. it cost. He had the whole tower destroyed, JP Morgan did. Yeah. He had it taken down. He's gonna give it away for free. He found out. Free energy. You're gonna pay a hundred and fifty bucks to pet that freaking dolphin. Well you know something? Pal. Nikola Tesla made a big mistake bringing his son, his work to the US. He should have went to Canada. He should have went somewhere else. He should have went somewhere else. The United States that, you know, went with the sellout, suck up uh, Thomas Edison, which incidentally is what we were taught in school, in our history books. We never knew, we never heard the word Nikola Tesla or Wilhelm Reich, ever. Buried. Only the sellouts we heard about. And that was that. All right, listen.
Have a good one, people. Or like, um, I saw the movie Troy a few days ago. Oh. And they were I talking about going to war with the Greeks. Yeah. You know, because Troy stood, uh, they, they, uh, was Helen, Helen was stolen. Was Troy a, a nation or a city? A city state, the nation. It was a city state. Yeah. Like the Vatican is self governed. Sparta? Sparta was also. Well, that Sparta is, an, is a, also an island. Yeah, but, but it was a city state. Yeah, a city, city state. state, yeah. But anyway, like the, the, the one guy, Achilles. Achilles, they always accuse Achilles of, uh, you just want your name to go down in history. The you legacy, uh, yeah. So, uh, Achilles uh, was talking to the king. And the king said, only king's names go down in history. Sounds like, we win the war. Sounds like you don't. It sounds like uh, the attitude of the popes back then too. That's exactly. It true. was uh, it was a, an imperialism. It was a monarchy. Yeah. It was a monarchy. And only yeah. the big boys and girls, you know, were written up in history. In other words, you do the work, they get the credit. That's it. Because they're in power, they're much wealthier than you, and they say so. Sounds like today. Any day. I think Alexander the Great was from Macedonia, which is now part of. Uh, which became part of Yugoslavia later, uh, later on. Macedonia is the far northern part of Greece. Yeah. Alexander. But anyway, uh, have a good one. Yeah, thank you for your history lesson this week. Yeah, we gave you a little a little <coughs> a little history tidbit at the at the end of this show. Yeah. Progressive discussions. Yeah. You gotta like the way you look. Yeah. I guarantee it. Oh, I also missed the original Dos Equis man. He was the best. Yeah, he was the best. I mean, he, he, he was a classy looking guy. You know? Well. You know, but maybe... Uh, will they come to their senses a little down the road? I think his agent probably wanted uh, more and more money. Maybe, maybe. So they went with somebody that works cheaper, the guy that's there now. Yeah, The guy with the, the, the dark beard and the schnozola. Yeah. But he seems like a he seems like a cool guy. No, no, he ain't. Cool. But he's not he's not like the original Dos Equis no. with the gray beard. No. Actually, uh, no, never mind. Never I'll, mind. I'll tell you. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay.